Hey, it's Darius, and you probably know me from the CPA exam tutoring.com. But we also offer the EA review, the enrolled agent parts one, two, and three. So go to CPA exam tutoring.com, get yourself on I 75, where the right teacher makes all the difference. Today, we're going to look at EA part three, and in particular, a topic known as the statute of limitations, something you know they're going to test you on in the enrolled agent exam. So let's see how you would handle these questions. Vicki, a calendar year taxpayer, filed her 2019 federal income tax return on May 19th, 2020. So she filed it late, right? Because it was due April 15th, 2020. That's what they'll tell us in the next sentence. And no extensions were filed. Vicki paid the amount due of 1900 when? On August 11th, 2020. So a couple of months after, and she paid the tax. The last day for IRS to assess additional tax on this return is when? Well, the answer is May 19th, 2023, because the statute of limitations is generally three years from the date the return was filed, and the return was filed after the due date on May 19th, 2020. So that would bring the three-year statute of limitation to May 19th, 2023. So letter A looks good. But the statute is actually the later of three years after the return was filed, or two years after the date the tax was paid, whichever is later, and the tax was considered paid when? It was paid on August 11th, 2020. Two years after that would be August 11th, 2022, but that's not the later date, is it? No, letter C is wrong because May 19th, 2023 is later than August 11th, 2022. So this is the kind of question you're gonna get where you've gotta choose between two dates to determine when does the statute of limitations end? Notice the statute of limitations began on May 19th, 2020, and it would end three years later, three years from the time the return was filed on May 19th, 2023. Notice that the statute of limitations did not start on April 15th, 2020, because when the taxpayer files later, the IRS can go with that later date and begin the statute there and have the extra time to examine the return. And while it looks like this favors the IRS, it also favors the taxpayer. If Vicki wanted to amend her return and claim a refund, she'd have until the same date, May 19th, 2023, to request a refund. Lord S Corp, a calendar year C Corp, mailed its year 19 tax return by certified mail, postmarked April 10th, year 20. The IRS received it on April 24th, year 20. Assuming no weekends or holidays, the required length of time to maintain sufficient records ends on what day? And the answer is April 15th, year 23, because a calendar year C Corp return for year 19 is due April 15th of year 20. So records must be kept for as long as they're material and they're material as long as the statute of limitations is running. And the statute of limitations for the return is three years from the due date of the return, which is April 15th, year 23. This is because although they filed early on April 10th, their return is considered filed on the last day for filing, which is April 15th. Thus, the required length of time to maintain records will end on that April 15th, year 23, and not April 10th, year 23. It doesn't matter that the IRS received the return after the due date since it was postmarked on time. If the return was not filed until April 24th, year 20, if it would have told us that in the facts, then the correct answer would have been April 24th, year 23. So records need to be kept as long as the statute of limitations period is still going. And that's a three year period from the date of filing. Lily, a calendar year taxpayer, filed an individual tax return for year 20 on March 7th, year 21. Lily neither committed fraud nor omitted amounts in excess of 25% of gross income on the tax return. Assuming no weekends or holidays, what is the latest day that she must keep records available? And that would be till the statute of limitations expires. And when would that be? Three years from the date the return was filed or the return was due. A tax return filed before the due date, like here, March 7th, that's considered filed on the due date. So she has to keep records until April 15th, the due date of the return, year 24. And that's the last day for IRS to assess a notice of deficiency. And it's also the last day for her to amend the return and try to get a refund. It's a three-year statute of limitations. Because she did not commit fraud, 
nor omit amounts in excess of 25% of gross income. If she would have committed fraud, there would be no statute of limitations, and she'd have to keep records available forever. And if she omitted amounts in excess of 25% of gross income, then the three-year statute of limitations would be six years. Megan filed her 2022 individual tax return form 1040 on April 15, 2023, but did not pay the tax due of $1,800. On June 25th, 2024, over a year later, she paid the tax in full. In 2025, she discovered additional deductions for a 2022 return that will result in a refund of $1,600. To receive her refund, Megan must file an amended return by what date? And the answer is June 25th, 2026, because a claim for a refund must be filed within the time limits established in the statute of limitations. Refund claims may be made three years from the due date plus extension, which would be April 15th, 2026, or two years from the time the tax was paid, whichever is later. In this case, the tax was paid June 25th, 2024. So two years from that date is the later date, June 25th, 2026, compared to April 15th, 2026. So Megan must file this refund claim before June 25th, 2026. The answer is B, and this is the kind of question you better be ready for.